Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. It is that time of the year again. I usually put out a winter forecast in September, so here it is. And again, this is just more of a guide. There's no such thing as a perfect forecast when you're dealing with months in advance. Uh, and I love just seeing you know, what everybody else is thinking as well, but this is what I'm thinking based on what I see, and the variables, the trends, and all of that. So here are my um, bullet points. We've got El Nino right now. I think we're going to see a strong El Nino for at least one month, if not a couple of months. Um, I think there's going to be a Modokai contribution, an El Nino Modokai, at least 30% contribution into the forecast, maybe more. Um, and I'll explain what that means coming up. I think overall what we're going to see set up is a powerful subtropical jet stream that is dominant once we get into January, February, March, April, May. I think we're going to see a screaming subtropical jet. And we actually saw, there's a, there's a model for this. I think we already saw this. I'll explain that. I'll show you what I think of that coming up. I think we've got abnormally warm Pacific Ocean temps and Atlantic temps, and that gradient, I think, will play in to our storm development. Um, I think the possibility of atmospheric rivers is high. Um, I mean, why not? We've already got a west-east flow with a subtropical jet. That's essentially what it is. So I think that that possibility is high. My big winners, Tahoe, Mama, Taos, Angel Fire, Brian Head, Wolf Creek, Telluride, Purgatory, Crested Butte, Monarch. I also include Loveland, a basin, possibly Summit County with some spillover, and the Northeast. On the bubble, Aspen, Snowmass, Vail, Wasatch. I think at least normal snowfall, if not more in those places. They could easily tilt to 105 to 110%, 110% of normal, if we get the right Modokai contribution. And some models indicate that that could easily happen, that we tilt those areas, burst, pop the bubble, and they go with above normal snowfall. So let's jump into this. This is what we saw. This is the model. Um, the, the, this is what we saw in May, June, and early July. Powerful subtropical jet. I think this is a foreshadow and a mirror of what we're going to see this winter, especially January, February, March, April, May. We're going to see this subtropical jet deliver a parade of storm systems. What did it do? It nailed Colorado, for one thing, especially the front range up to the Continental Divide. I mean, we saw 100 to 300% of normal precip during those months of total precip. Look at the San Juans. 1 to 200% normal. Even the I-70 corner, and this is why I say the bubble's there, but it could easily go high for Pitkin County, Eagle County, parts of Summit County, all saw 100 to 130% normal precip. I think we're going to see that mirrored this winter. Um, just a brief touch on Denver. I think we're going to see above normal snow. I think it could be 60 to 90 inches, which would be about 25% above the norm. Normal is 57 inches in a winter in Denver in the metro area proper. Um, and you can see that it's measured at DIA, but we, it represents all of the Denver metro area. You can see that the Weather Service broke it down. Uh, almost all, seven of eight seasons had uh, of El Nino, strong El Nino periods had above normal snow for the Denver metro. And again, goes back to this. This is what we saw, and I think it's going to mirror this. Here's where we stand. Sea surface temp anomalies are all running above norm. In fact, they all qualify for El Nino. That's where we are. You can see the red and the red colors and the orange colors around the equator in the South Pacific. That's the key area. Um, but I want you to see those anomalies, where they are right now, and where I think they're going to move based on model guidance. Here's where we stand. We are currently in an El Nino, and we're on the rise. The temperatures continue to warm. This is a great graphic from Ben Knoll. You can see August 2023 sea surface temperatures are approaching August of 2015. Another big El Nino year, strong El Nino. Approaching 97, approaching 87, already there at 1982. And approach 1972 would be a big high water mark if we were able to get there. So we're up there with some of the most, the most strong, most intense El Ninos that we've seen in history. We're just pulling out of a triple dip. The last three winters have all had La Nina, so we're completely flipping the script in the pattern for this winter. Okay, model guidance here. Now this is uh, the European model. For December, you can see no change. Stable SST anomalies, Central Pacific in the um, El Nino 3.4 region especially. Watch what happens in January. 
starting to creep and more towards those brighter reds into the Central Pacific, away from Central Central and uh, Southern America. Watch what happens in February. The anomaly region is closing off and it's moving into the Central Pacific, Central uh, Pacific, away from South America, and it's even more pronounced in March. Look at that. Now, some people are probably going to disagree, but I think this points towards a Modokai, El Nino Modokai. And if that happens, that has a contribution to the storm track and who gets the heaviest snow over the winter. What you're seeing right there, those anomalies moving into the Central Pacific and away from South America. Now, in a pure Modokai, we'd see some blues start to break out around um, just off the South American coast. Doesn't happen, but I think there's some contributions here from Modokai. Okay, um, no question here from Noah. It's all El Nino 24-7. Model guidance from Climate Forecast System says we top out at about plus 2 degrees Celsius in the, in the El Nino 3.4 region right along the equator in the Central Pacific, South Pacific. Um, that's a strong El Nino. European goes even higher at plus 2.5. Could be one of the strongest of all time. So this is happening. And what would you expect from this? There it is. This is your basic El Nino pattern. Subtropical jet rules the roost, and you get um, the southern tier of states with the heaviest precip. So what am I gonna? What are we gonna do here? What do I think? I agree with the European here. Um, this is December, middle of the atmosphere, pressure anomalies. You can see them drop. The lower anomalies, they're all there over the southern tier of states. Subtropical jet starts to establish itself, but then it becomes king. By the time we get into um, January of 2024, look at those anomalies. Those are big. This is going to be a powerful subtropical jet by the time we get into January, February, March. And the gradients that are established here, the temperature gradients, the pressure gradients, suggest we could have some big spin-ups of large storm systems along the East Coast running right up into New England. We could see some nor'easters. And I think we're going to see... Atmospheric river setup, Pineapple Express. The, the pattern just lends itself to that. Model guidance, NMME, North American Multimodel Ensemble, thinks we're in for a drier than normal um, fall season here, September, October, November, across the West, with the East Coast getting the heaviest precip. But by the time we get into January, February, March, it's game on. Subtropical jet is there, uh, heavier than normal, above normal precip, California, most of the southern tier, parts of Colorado, southeastern parts of the United States, and up into the uh, northeast New England. Again, NMME takes a number of models into account. And this is one of them. This model maximizes everything. From NCAR, this is the... CESM model, the Community Earth Systems model. You look at this model, and it just brings copious amounts of precip into California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and parts of the southeast. This maximizes the subtropical jet and the atmospheric rivers. It's really something. If this happens, look out. But you know what? The CFS, the climate forecast, system, isn't that far off. Look at March right here. It's got a lot of moisture coming in on the subtropical jet. California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. Here's my forecast. When I think of everything, synthesize everything and how I feel about it, and what I think and what I see, green balls are above normal winter snowfall. California, southern Utah, a lot of Colorado. Um, normal snowfall, at least in Aspen Snowmass Vale, could easily tilt to 105 to 110 above normal if we get more Modokai um, contribution and you saw one of the you saw two models that say that is absolutely possible Alto the Wasatch Snowbird Snow Basin Park City Brighton um, Solitude uh, at least normal snowfall but again could easily go higher um, 95 to 100 percent of normal snowfall Big Sky Jackson and below all of the orange bubbles zooming into Colorado here's what I got uh, above normal snowfall, Crested Butte, Telluride, Silverton, Purgatory, Wolf Creek, a number of locations. Taos all the way up through the Sand Grays. And up along, I think right onto the Continental Divide. So Loveland, A Basin, Water Park, tilting down into Denver, above normal snow. Some of that may spill over into Summit County. 
Um, and again, on the bubble, Aspen Vale, Snowmass could go, could tilt to 105 to 110. The southwest wind here with this type of setup could be a razor. Um, it's an absolute factor when you deal with a subtropical jet. And not all resorts, a number of resorts in Colorado do not do well with a southwest wind. Vale being one of them. Parts of Aspen, not all of Aspen, parts of Aspen, some of the mountains don't do well with it. And some of the San Juans don't do either because you get a downsloping wind off of some of the terrain features. So that's a factor. In the Northeast, I've got above normal snow for most locations, normal up around Jay Peak and some other places. But I think that it just lends itself to the possibility of big storms developing with the gradients, the temperature gradients, pressure gradients, and just rolling right up the East Coast and dumping heavy snow, nor'easters. Specifics, 80% uh, of normal winter snowfall, Baker, the Pacific Northwest, Banff, and so on, um, Sun Valley included. Big Sky, Jackson Hole, 95% of normal. Aspen Snow Mass, the Wasatch, Vail, um, at least 100%, so normal snow, but again, on the bubble could tilt higher. Um, 105 to 110 uh, from Breckenridge to Monarch to Loveland, Winter Park, A Basin, um, and uh, Telluride. Looking at 115 or higher, Angel Fire, Tahoe, up to 130 at Kirkwood, Wolf Creek, and Mammoth. Guys, there's my forecast for the winter. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care.